there is so much talk right now about morning routines and how morning routines set you up for the rest of your day and they set you up for success or failure. Everyone's going on about CEO morning routines, about having the cold showers and exercising in the morning and getting up at 5 a.m., which is all great. But what does Islam say about this? I've been doing a lot of research. I spoke to a few scholars. I looked in some books and I've compiled the perfect Muslim morning routine, inshallah. So here is the perfect Sunnah and Islamic backed morning routine. You know, I feel like there are so many things in Western self-help that have been taken from Islam. From building discipline into your life by fasting, from getting up early in the morning. There are so many things that they've like, that they use that we've been preaching for a very long time. And you know, in my head, it just backs up the fact even more that the Quran is from God. I've compiled an amazing science and Dean backed morning routine for you guys and this is something for me uh, as a female who also has a daughter so bear that in mind that there will be slight differences for men like things like the virtues of going to the mosque for fajr prayer which women can do too but it's not really doable for a lot of women and it's not a requirement for us and as a mum it's also very difficult so i'm going to show you what i do let's get straight to it as muslims we are encouraged to wake up early in the morning this is what our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam actually did he would wake up for Fajr and then he would stay up and then he would have a nap in the afternoon. Napping is Sunnah, I love that. Um, but he would get up after Fajr. It's not a requirement, you don't have to, but it's recommended. And I think it's a great habit to have. So at the moment Fajr is around 5 a.m. in the morning here in the UK. When I get up at that time in the morning at 5 a.m., the first words on my lips and the first words on your lips and in your mind and in your heart should be about Allah. I've got this amazing dua for you guys that I've taken from the book. Bidayat al Hidayah, which is like the beginning of guidance by Mama Ghazali. And um, I think it's an incredible dua. Now, you don't have to memorize the whole thing. You can just keep it on a piece of paper that you maybe keep next to your bed so that you can read this dua in the morning because I think it's so powerful. This is the dua in English. Praise be to God who has made us alive after making us dead and towards whom is the return. We and the rest of creation belong to God in this morning. Greatness and authority belong to him. Might and power belong to him, the Lord of all the worlds. In this morning, we are at the state of natural disposition of Islam on the statement of sincerity. There is no God but God on the religion of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and on the religion of our father Ibrahim, a man of pure faith, a man completely surrendered to God and was not one of those who believed that God was divine partners. God, we pray to you that you would direct us today to all good. I seek the protection of you from committing any evil today and from bringing any evil upon a Muslim. God, through you alone, we have come to this morning. Through you alone, we pass the night. Through you alone, we live through. You alone, we die. You alone is our final return. We pray to you for the good of today and of that which is in it. We seek the protection of you from the evil of today and that which is in it. It's a long du'a, but it's great. And it makes me emotional reading it because it is such an incredible du'a. And I think that's the perfect way to get blessing on your day is to just start your day off making that intention to Allah that you recognize his glory and that you want to make today in strife to strive towards goodness, inshallah. Then it's important to go and do wudu and pray Fajr. You know, the two rakat before Fajr are very important. There's actually a lot of blessing in them. So I would always recommend praying the two sunnah and then praying the two rakat of Fajr, which you know, we all do anyway. This is not new knowledge. But then after Fajr, I will always recommend just taking some time to really align. So I would say, say take some time to read Quran, to do morning adhkar, to set your Islamic intentions. So to really make it clear to Allah why you're grateful for this day, the things that you're grateful for, express gratitude, because gratitude is so important for your mental health. So I would always say, express gratitude, be specific, say Alhamdulillah for dot dot dot, and then set your Islamic intentions. Things like, today I will make sure that I'm good to my family. I will make sure that I'm a good mother to my child. I will make sure that I only speak truth and not falsehood. You know, set some Islamic intentions so you're already in the right headspace for the day and then make dua to guide you, etc. And then after doing that little Islamic routine of the Quran, uh, morning adhkar, making dua and um, gratitude to Allah and setting Islamic intentions, drink water. <laughs> Honestly, drink water 
there's so much science behind why it's so important to drink water in the morning because you haven't had water for the entire night. It just helps you get your body hydrated and get your mind ready for the day. So I'd say drink a glass of water and then it's time to journal. I really hope you guys journal because there's so much benefit from it. This is now our kind of dunya journal. We've done our Islamic intentions, this is our dunya journal. So it's really important to write down what it is you want to achieve that day dunya wise. So at the moment I'm writing a book. So maybe my goals would be around make sure I've completed a chapter from my book or make sure I've shot the video and sent it to my editor or make sure that you know, I'm a mum as well. So it'll be like, make sure you've gone and bought nappies, <laughs> you know, set those goals and get everything out of your head that you can get out of your head and onto paper so that you can forget about it. Because when you're holding lots of things in your brain, it causes a lot of anxiety and mental load throughout your day. You can take that mental load off by just writing it down and just saying, you know what, it's written down. You don't have to sit in my brain anymore. That's one of the biggest reasons why people lack motivation is because they're holding too much to-do list in their brain and not getting it down on paper. So it's really important that you get this down on paper and that you get it out of your brain and that you know exactly what it is you want to achieve that day with, whether it's to-do lists, task lists, whatever it is, journal, make sure it's all there and then you can move forward. In these morning routine videos, you'll hear so many people saying, have a healthy breakfast. Now I'm not saying that you're not allowed to have a healthy breakfast. I'm going to say that intermittent fasting has insane amounts of benefits for your body. So I personally will skip breakfast. Please don't hate me. I will skip breakfast because I would say if you're fasting through the night and then you can extend that fasting window just a little bit longer, maybe to 10 a.m., 11 a.m., even 12, there are so many benefits for your body. You know, as humans, we're not meant to be eating all the time. It's actually very healthy for us to go long periods without food and then eat and then go long periods without food. So I would say push that as much as you can. You know, our body is a, is a self-healing organism. So as your blood sugar drops, it goes into the fat burning energy system, which makes ketones and it repairs the brain. So after around eight hours, it takes a switch to happen. After around eight hours, you start making ketones and those ketones are doing so much, so much benefit for your brain. So what's recommended is to maybe fast for like 12 hours. That's from the last time you ate in the evening all the way through the night until the next time you eat the next day. So that 12 hours, which I think a lot of people just do naturally anyway, you're gonna get like a good dose of ketones and you're gonna get a good amount of repair and um, just goodness for your brain. But if you can do 15 hours, then your growth hormone goes up, which does things like keep you looking young. There's so many benefits to that. And also testosterone in men. And your inflammation goes down. And then if you can push that to 17 hours, and your body starts getting rid of bad cells and making cells stronger. So you can do this to fight things like infections. Um, yeah, there's just so many benefits. And you know what? Allah made us in a way that we have that we're not meant to be eating all the time. We have Ramadan coming up soon now anyway as well. So yeah, I'm really, really going to say that there are so many benefits to this. Just look them up online. There are heap loads of benefits. Go for it. Push that meal as much as you can. And then after that, another really important thing that I do is I just get out with Khatija. Once Khatija's up, which is around 7 a.m. normally, once Khatija's up, I just get out with her. We get out into the park straight away. She loves it, she loves going out, but I would just recommend just going for a walk, getting some exercise, wherever you are in your life for, with regards to exercise, go for it, whether it's the gym or whatever. For me, I'm a mum, I exercise a lot naturally. So just going to the park with my child, she loves it. And getting out in nature has so many benefits. We're not meant to be cooped up indoors all the time. It's so bad for us. So I would say that's like the perfect way to set up success for the rest of your day in the morning by following this step by step. And then we're told by Imam Ghazali in Badayat al Hadayat that then we should spend all the way up until Zuhur doing things like seeking knowledge, devotional act, or doing activities that benefit Muslims, you know, things like volunteering, helping out society, or acquiring necessities for yourself and your family. So that's things like work. So then they're things that you should be doing up until the hood. But yeah, that's the science-backed, amazing sort of routine. I hope you guys have learned something from this and you incorporate some of it into your day. Life is full of amazing tips and tricks. And I think so many of them are found in our religion and we just take it for granted. And we kind of look to these sort of big, rich CEO type people for lifestyle tips. When really we should be looking to Prophet Muhammad because he 
has the best tips for us that are given to him from Allah. So Alhamdulillah, thank you for Islam. Thank you guys for watching. Assalamualaikum.